Hey everyone, while exploring a watch for fresh video ideas, I came across this full screen navigation menu with a unique layout that we haven't tackled yet. So I decided to recreate it using HTML, CSS, JavaScript and GSAP. I made sure it's fully responsive, so it works seamlessly on smaller screens too. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. For the source code, you can check out CodeDrip Pro through the link in the description. Alright, let's get right into the code. Let's start by creating our menu. We'll need a menu item, which will divide into four parts. The index, two menu link containers, one for the hover effect and the menu image. Inside the index, we'll add the menu index and the menu name. In the link container, we'll just use a paragraph element for now. We'll add the same inside the hover link container as well. An image element for the menu image. Next. I'll replicate this menu item 4 more times and update the index, names and images accordingly. Lastly, I'll add a close button to the menu. We'll also need a container to add the website content. For now, we'll include just a menu toggle button. Let's move on to the CSS. First, we'll set some global styles to reset margins and paddings and ensure all elements use border box for box sizing. We'll set the width and height to 100% for the HTML and body elements and specify our font family. For images, we'll set their width and height to 100% and use object fit to cover the entire area. We'll style the paragraph elements to be uppercase with a font size of 12 pixels, a font weight of 500 and a line height of 100%. For the container, we'll set its width and height to 100% and use a background image that covers the entire area centered at 50%. We'll style the menu open button to be fixed at the top left corner with a Z index of 1 and a specific color. The menu close button will be fixed at the top right corner with a higher Z index and a different color. Both the buttons will have margin and padding and we'll use clip path to prepare it for the animation. Inside these buttons, the paragraphs will be positioned relative. The menu will be fixed at the top right corner, taking up 20% of the viewport width and 100% of the viewport height. We'll use Flexbox for its layout and set a Z index of 2. Each menu item will be relatively positioned, taking up 100% of the height and using Flexbox for centering. We'll set a background color and a border on the left and use clip path for the animation. The index inside each menu item will be styled to fill the height with padding and center text. The second paragraph will be rotated 90 degrees. The menu links will be absolutely positioned at the bottom with transformations for positioning and rotation. For the third menu item, we'll adjust the bottom position to have an offset. The paragraphs inside the menu links will use a specific font, larger font size and a lighter font weight. We'll also apply transitions for smooth effects. For the hover effect, the hover link will be positioned off screen to the right with a different color. On hover, the main link will move left and the hover link will move to the center.
The menu image inside each item will be absolutely positioned with transformation for centering and a clip path for the initial hidden state. On the hover, the clip path will reveal the image. For responsiveness, at maxed width 900 pixels, the menu will change to a column layout. The menu links will reposition to the center without rotation and their font size will decrease. The hover link will be hidden and the main link will center on hover. The index, text alignment and padding will adjust and the menu images will be hidden. Now let's dive into the JavaScript. First. We wait for the DOM to be fully loaded before executing our script. We then register the GSAP plugin custom ease and create a custom ease cow called hop. Next, we select the necessary elements, the menu open button, the menu close button, the menu itself and all menu items. We also set a flag to track whether the menu is open or not. Next, I'll paste a helper function to split text into individual span elements. I've used this function in previous videos as well. This function targets the specified selector, grabs the text, splits it into characters and wraps each character in a span. If the character is a space, it replaces it with a non-breaking space. We call this function on all paragraph elements inside the menu links to apply the span wrapping. We then set initial positions for the menu close text and the spans inside the menu links using GSAP. Next, we define the handle menu function. This function animates the menu's width, toggling between 20% and 100% of the viewport width based on the menu's current state using our custom ease curve. It also animates the justification of the menu items, aligning them either to the center or the start. Then we adjust the alignment of the menu item indices and toggles a class on the menu items to apply specific styles when the menu is open. We then animate the positions of the menu close text and the menu open text, moving them up and down based on the menu state. Lastly, we loop through each menu item and animate the individual span elements inside the menu links. These animations are staggered for a more dynamic effect. Finally, we'll add event listeners to the menu open and close buttons, linking them to the handle menu function to toggle the menu on click. That's it. Hope you found the video helpful, see you in the next one.